Welcome to the Hazel Rockets podcast, the number one golf podcast for new product launches, interviews with industry experts, golf trends, and more. Here are your hosts, Jen, Ken, and Bill. Hey, I'm Jen. I'm Ken. And I'm Bill. And guess what, guys? We made it to our second episode of the Hazel Rockets podcast. Pretty sure there was bets going out on the floor that this would never have made it to number two. No, I don't know about that. I, yeah. think, I think we're ready. I think we are ready. Right. I think we're going to be a little looser this week. I think it'll be kind of nice. I didn't I didn't even drink. I mean, so... I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I brought a drink, but there's no yeah. alcohol in it. That's detectable, at least. What I know is Jennifer didn't trust us with a script this week. So, <laughs> yeah. So... <clears throat> Keep you guys a little looser. <laughs> Feel a little uh, naked. Not literally, but yeah. just... There's nothing in my hand. But that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, it's something related to golf or we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Um, uh, so let's see what's going on. What's going on lately? Uh, we're in California. I don't know what's going on with you guys, but pg and E rolling blackouts. Um, uh, Bill, are those affecting you at all? I know. Uh, Thankfully, personally, not right in our area. It's not. So, okay. uh, much to the chagrin of my girls because they thought they were going to get a day off of school or maybe two or three and their school stayed open. Power stayed on. Yeah. What they don't know would have just been added on at the end. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. We got we got that <clears throat> notification as well. Yeah. And uh, my son was going to have his school canceled. My daughter wasn't, and was so mad that she was going to have to go to school. It was just super bitter. And then I'm going around realizing I do not have any emergency preparedness kits. So I'm on Amazon ordering product. And then yesterday, going to the um, store uh, our gas stations were out of gas i i'm like oh no it was crazy it was ridiculous we're i was out California. of ta- i was out of town and so we were looking at all the uh electrical electricity po- apocalypse happening and i was thinking it was kind of a little bit overkill yeah, personally me too and our girls were just you know they were doing fine and then i was thinking uh that you know if if the electricity went off there was plenty of things in the house to eat that, that they would have been just fine. But uh, they were quite sad when I texted them and said, schools schools are open, get up and go to school. So yeah, yeah. Half, half a million households affected, though, across Northern California. Yeah, I think it's up to 800,000 is what they're expecting. And and I guess it's going to be a long-term thing for like up to the next 10 years. And so I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I took the kids yesterday. We're like, let's go to the store, stock up. We got firewood. I bought some water. I'm like protein bars and then things kind of got off the rail a little bit we bought ice cream i'm not sure how that was really going to help us well that's a survival uh, necessity (laughs) isn't it heather's like we can drink it and once it melts (laughs) and then we got twinkies because you know that'll last forever um i can attest to that yeah (laughs) so yeah our our disaster survival kit um uh, yeah, we, I'm not sure, what, but we had a really fun time checking out at uh, uh, with the with the guys at um, at checkout. So that was fun. That's nice. true, and I know we're having a little bit of fun, but we don't want to take you know make light of the situation for people that are without power. But hopefully, our our California local and city state government can get this corrected. Yeah, because it's this is ridiculous. This is, not, this is not right. And we don't want. I mean, obviously, we don't want any more fires. Um, because you know what happened last year in Paradise was, you know, devastating. Yeah, completely. Yeah. But we are definitely living in an age where um, we should not be at a time where we need to be prepared for up to five days without um electricity and in California, in my opinion. I would agree. Um, Ken, you kind of took over our table. Um, Bill was only able to fit one of his toys on here this week, um, which is what seems to be a little... I thought it was appropriate for the release of uh, recently of the new uh, movie, The Joker. So Have you seen it? I have not seen it. I, I've been a little tied up on the evenings lately, and uh, but I've, I know many of my friends... Uh, and co-workers who have seen it and said it's outstanding. Uh, acting by uh, Joaquin Phoenix is incredible. Um, He's a pretty amazing actor. Oscar-worthy. Actually, yeah. uh, I'm told the show, the film is incredibly dark, a bit disturbing. But again, um, all of that is uh, part of what makes the movie so fantastic. I mean, that's I the heard, character so. of the yes. Joker. So yeah. it's kind of a wild dichotomy between DC and Marvel. How you know Marvel's 
awful of life and humor and yeah. DC could not be more, you know, dark and moody and well, especially with, you know, I mean, the origins of Batman is a very dark yeah. chapter for sure. How he came to be and this is Batman's arch enemy. So and there is a little bit of a throw to the Batman's origin from what I understand in the film. So yeah. All right. So there he is, the Joker. Hanging out with us today on set. Uh, Ken, what's with all the gear that you outfitted us with? Well, I got back from Texas, uh, where I've been the last three days. The... I was wondering where you were the last few days yeah. at the house. You, you missed him? Yeah. <laughs> she was busy spending a small fortune at the grocery store. Clearly, so. <laughs> we, uh, hey, Nash, well, uh, I know where we're going to go if we run out of food then. So okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Ice cream milk. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, National Golf Buyers Association had their uh, 2019 annual meeting um, in Dallas the last three days. And so Did you guys uh, talk where I was. music and football. Well, the reason I have those is uh, we actually for the reception on Monday night, um, a couple of we, we put on a big uh, music festival called Golf and Guitars here in Sacramento every May that raises we've raised uh about a million to five since we started for uh, children's and, and charities benefiting those with disabilities. And a couple of our big supporters live about an hour and a half from there. So uh, who? Jason Eady and Courtney Patton, uh, which are two of the smartest songwriters I know. They're, um, I know Jason's one of your absolute favorite yeah, artists. Yeah, that Jason. album that's there on the table which um, is, what? is called When the Money's All Gone. Um, it came out in 2009 and for me, that everybody has a an album that kind of is, um, kind of Iconic. quintessential and you know kind of transcends their music collection. And as you know, I've got a very very big music collection, and Jay, that album was it for me. That um, we had uh, from that, I went down this giant rabbit hole, kind of finding out about Red Dirt music and discovered artists like Guy Clark and Towns Van Okay, Zandt wait, what's Red Dirt music? Red Dirt music is country music that Texas has its kind of own country music scene. Um, they have their own country music chart, and uh, Jason's had a couple number one hits down there. And you can be an icon in Texas and have no one outside of Texas hardly even know who you are. Um, and we're starting to see some of that move. Like Cody Johnson just had a number one hit on country radio. He's... He sells out 60,000 person Houston rodeo venues down in Texas. And hmm. um, it's it's kind of a unique uh, scene into itself. But uh, Jason's music kind of led me to down this rabbit hole of discovering all of this other great music. So Jason and his wife, Courtney, um, who, uh, again, two of my favorite artists, they did a reception down there and just kind of give them a plug. We had we had lots of fun d them uh, doing music and then... Uh, um, into the wee hours of the morning. But then uh, two days of seminars and then meeting with tons of vendors. Um, the football, we were a top 10 Wilson account. Um, and so they uh, uh, that's a uh, genuine college football that has the NGBA logo on the backside here nice. that the audience can't see. So. so the NGBA is a top 10 Wilson? H Hagen Oaks is a top 10 account ah. for them. So uh, in our Morton Golf Sales uh, online store together. So... Um, that was a, a little award that they handed out, give, uh, awarding their top 10 accounts. And then um, lots of new products. I mean, I can give a little run through if you guys are yeah. kind of interested. Let's yeah. What's so, there? Um, I uh, learned Sun Mountain, all their 2020 bags are doing exceptionally well. They've got a, uh, a, a new, um, even lighter weight 14 way bag that's going to be coming out in the new year. Um, Did they say how much it weighs? Uh, like 2.2 pounds. Wow, that's it's, incredible. That's amazing to me that you can have a 14 way, I mean, yes. 14 divide golf bag that weighs. Which is what everybody wants if you want as much organization as possible. But you and always, to, to attack your clubs, right? Yeah, well, the, yeah, and also to have the storage usually in a 14 way, but you the trade off is always that the bag is going to be heavier. Yeah. Right. So 2.2 pounds? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. How is that even possible? That's, yeah. I can't wait. Uh, there's a vendor called Air Force One that uh, has made a lot of our kind of lower end product um, and uh, used to have the Powerbuilt license. They actually have some uh, woods that are coming out next year that are actually nitrogen charged. So they actually pressurize the head um, and they actually have this valve that's in the very back of the wood so that, you know, typically a wood is hollow. They actually charge it to actually give it pressure to help 
the rebound effect faster off the driver. So Okay, I've, I'm thinking Fast and Furious. You know what I mean? You just yeah. push that button and what? away it goes. Yeah, it's filled with knocks. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, so we're, same, at, same thing? Yeah, we're, we're excited <laughs> to see what that is. Uh, Callaway has two new putters coming out, um, one of which will look remarkably mm-hmm. like a spider putter that TaylorMade has, um, and then has a new titanium driving iron that's coming out. Um, when? Uh, those are all coming out later this month, in oct- oh. later in October, so uh, right around the corner. They've got a new wood line that comes out in um, around the PGA Merchandise Show, which is the end of January, first part of February. Um, and while they wouldn't unveil it, um, they w- did say that there is some brand new technology in the wood that they're super excited about. They really feel like this is, you know, they've had some major evolutions in wood design that have kind of changed and reshaped golf and they feel like this next evolution that they have is going to be one of those i don't know many of the details um they're going to kind of unveil it to the industry within the next couple weeks so excited to see what that is Mm. yep um there is actually heather hadley our our apparel buyer uh senior buyer was with me back there and there's a a product that she fell in love with called sparms S P A R M S, and it's the S P's capitalized. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> yeah, you have to say that very carefully. Yes. So, yeah, but um, <laughs> about 150 women on the LPJ tour are actually using this. It's actually uh, S P sleeves that go on your arms to protect you from uh, sun, and the. Um, what's cool about so it is like it, UV protection. It does. And we have a lot of sleeves that you pull up. I find them really uncomfortable because they kind of bind on these massive, uh, your, you know, your arms biceps that, yeah, are just that, that amazing. bulge out there. This one actually goes and connects across your back and then comes down your arm, which seems really weird. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, wait, so it's they, a sleeve up. that goes around your back and then goes down into another sleeve. That sounds okay. a lot more comfortable. Can you get it? <laughs> okay. Keep talking. <laughs> But what it does is it actually keeps the sleeves up because they're all connected in there. Okay, you so actually, they don't come down. Yeah, so you actually wear it underneath your shirt. And um, all I'm picturing are socks that would do the same thing. Uh, <laughs> what would they connect through? So this is a new like a golf shawl is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just put a little, okay. Yeah. But it's super. Uh, it, it's actually made from a kind of high tech material that when it when wind goes through it, it actually cools it off. So they were actually showing video after video. The LPGA Tour players are always doing this as they're going down the fairway. Mm -hmm. And it actually is what they're doing is cooling off their arms. Um, It's kind of a weird phenomenon. But if you're you're watching the LPGA Tour event, you can actually see what that is. So a couple of the other things that we saw, uh, Tour Edge has um, all new package sets. So all their new bazooka line, kind of a low end line, um, all looks terrific. It's... Uh, actually uh, package sets that kind of start in the $300 range. Um, all of that's being uh, introduced. That's going to be uh, out later this month as well. I find that a lot. There's not a lot of lower end products out there yeah. anymore. And Tour Edge being a, you know, a American company that uh, is kind of all based out of Chicago. They have a lifetime warranty on all their product. It's a great product. One really of the best. good people. Yeah. yeah. We really love them a lot. Echo actually had the coolest shoe I saw. So they have a new shoe um, called the mm-hmm. Biome 3 that's coming out. And the sole of the shoe it has three different colors in it. And it's actually made with three different rubbers on it. So it's actually hardest in the heel, softer in the midsection, and softest out on the toe. And it's not like three separate parts. They actually, when they're pouring the, the mold for it, it's actually blending. And you can actually see... The, the bottom foam bed is actually uh, blended through the three rubbers, and it's it's kind of fascinating. Um, but the three, way they, yeah, three different three different types. Are they three of, different types of rubber that's they, just they, poured they, at the same time? They are, and so they they you know a certain percentage goes in the heel, and then they actually tilt it up, and then they pour another one, but it's blended uh, throughout the shoe. So what so it looks like piece. it's one piece, but it, it looks like every one might be just slightly different based on where the blend happens. And you're saying that one of them gives more support or more cushion? You, or... you need more support in the heel of the shoe, but you want it softer out towards your toes and, and the ball of your foot. And, and and it does that. So, uh, And then, you know, when uh, the first spikeless shoe with um, Freddie Couples and the Echo shoe kind of, you know, kind of put Echo on the scene 10 years ago, they're actually reintroducing that line, uh, and he's going to be wearing it during the Masters again. Okay. So, 
Um, a tonic is back in the footwear market. Um, it's a line we had a name we haven't seen a lot yeah. of, and they have some really cool new shoes. They've actually, did you like it? I did. They, they've licensed Loudmouth, so there's going to be some Loudmouth. John mm-hmm. Daly's going to be wearing it out on the Champions Tour. There's some sure. crazy designs, as you would Blast from the past, the tonic. Yeah. And they made a great golf shoe back they in did. the day. They did. And it's, yeah, it so. too, like Tour Edge is kind of going to be more kind of value priced. It's going to be in the, you know, 60 to $100 range, somewhere in there. Uh, we'll be carrying that. Um, Mizuno has new woods coming out uh, in February. They've got two <clears> new <throat> balls coming out in February. Um, Nancy Lopez, that apparel brand, was just recently purchased, and they're going to have a whole new line out uh, coming out. Um, and then uh, probably the, the coolest thing I saw was uh, Lampkin. They have a whole new line of really cool putter grips. and But the cool part about it was the display. So... The uh, it's you know stands about okay, six I'm feet tall. Okay, I'm just gonna say you can tell that we're retailers over here. If the coolest part no. about this is the display, it's gonna be super cool for the <laughs> consumer because all of the grips on this display come on a shaft, and then in the display is a tailor-made spider putter, and the grips connect and disconnect from the shaft. So you just simply this quarter turn of the Lampkin grip, and the grip comes out of the t- the spider putter. And then there's a selection of like a dozen different grips that you can just slide back into the top of the shaft, twist it, and actually have a brand new grip on it again. So you so get a true feel of what it feels like on a putter. You do. You can actually yeah. go out on the putting green and use it and try 12 different uh, putter grips on one single head. And I thought that was a really unique way for people to actually go out and try the putter grip and see where it was. So, uh, But overall, it was a really good trip. But we, we uh, um, I uh, have been elected to the... Uh, board of directors for them so i'm going to be involved on a lot of the the product makeup and we we make up a lot of special makeup and limited edition products yeah, with right vendors and stuff yeah. and so i'll be do you uh, have a title heavily are we going to have to start referring to you schmuck i think is my new title so yeah but no, I don't so know, same no one we call you around here exactly right? Right. So, yeah. that won't be hard for us at all exactly easy to remember so uh no so, uh, so it sounds like it was a pretty productive good three days work. yeah included some music and some golf those are two of my favorite things how could that not be good nice Hey, I just want to say, did you guys coordinate your outfits this morning? Almost every day. Almost every day without even discussing it. That's yeah. right. We go out on limbs and wear wild colors like yeah. navy and black gray. and tan and, and gray. gray. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you look really good wearing your gray up against the, our gray couch, too. Thank you. It makes me look thinner. Maybe. <laughs> okay. I appreciate yeah. it. Hey, Bill, your eyes will stay like that up in the back of your head. So. <laughs> I don't think anyone saw the look that I was just giving, but that, that's okay. I think they did. <laughs> Should we introduce our first guest? Yes. I think so. Let's do it. All right. I'll let one of you guys do it. Oh, so our our first guest or our next guest? Our, our only guest. Our only guest today <laughs> is a man that needs no introduction. Well, we probably But we're going to introduce him yeah, anyway. We should. Scott Prenet with Cleveland Strixon Golf. Shall I come in? Come on in. Okay, I'll come in now. Scott, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. You've been here two days in a row. You were in here yesterday filming with me. Yeah, it was great. First uh, time doing a podcast. First time doing Facebook, Facebook Live. Live. Yeah. So I've had yeah. two great days. Scott brought me gifts yesterday. As oh. he almost actually broke our set, but yeah. we gifts. won't go there. Gifts. gifts. And, and you yeah. brought Kenny and I today. Well, you weren't here yesterday, Ken, so you missed your gift. Yeah. Okay. Very, um, I ate it. Oh, sorry. okay. You're going to have to share with, with Jen. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. And they're gone. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, what'd you bring to share hey. with us today? Oh, gosh. What did I bring? Um, Did not bring a microphone, but I did bring a golf club and golf clubs, I should say. Uh, we have a new launcher turbo line that's coming out soon. Uh, pretty excited about that. We just uh, had our first demo day out here on October 5th. Actually, it was a good day. Out there too, right? It was a beautiful yeah. day. Yeah. Beautiful day. A lot nice. of lot of foot traffic at Hagen. It's always awesome when it's eighty degrees at Hagen Oaks. Um, but yeah, we have a launcher turbo driver that's coming out. That's brand new. We're really excited about it. I think I'm gonna hand it over to you, you folks, maybe. Um, yeah. But again, I think our whole mantra uh, as a company is to find something that performs well at a at a at a value for the customer. Um, looks good. I, looks I, really good. I, I, I love the cosmetics on this new launcher turbo it's, yeah uh, it's space aged space age a little death star ish little darth vader ish yeah absolutely well you know we should go if with we that. can't pull everything back around to star wars then we're missing something oh, that's the slogan yeah. of the company right uh golf clubs for science fiction nerds it, 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 for nerds for yeah. sure and others yeah and, and yeah, others. especially okay. if it's billy that's kind of a nerdy yeah, way would, to go but yeah, yeah. 
I think it's worth trying just looking at it I for think, that reason. I think we should certainly promote that to the headquarters and see what they say. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe, well, okay. <laughs> at any rate, it's a very good looking club. Scott. It, it's yeah, it's been a really good looking yeah. club. I don't want to get too tacky, but it has some features and benefits that I think everyone will enjoy. And more than anything, it's going to launch. It's going to launch high, go far and uh, be priced at, at 349 I think it's a pretty reasonable price. Nice. So, so this particular one says draw hosel. Yeah, draw so we're going to... What is that? Why? Well, we most people slice the ball, and so we want to certainly counteract that with uh, changing some weighting around and making sure that the club comes through and gives them a little better chance of hitting a draw. You know, that's, that's the idea. Nice. But primarily, it's just to make it easy again. I think that's ultimately what Cleveland product will do most. It's, give people uh, that need the help, the help that that uh, they deserve. I think that's kind of the general gist from the Cleveland line is, you know, we have brands like, you know, the Titleists and the TaylorMades that are really targeting that pinnacle player. And Cleveland kind of saw a kind of hole in the marketplace about the you know, the journeyman, the weekender, the, you know, the the guy playing in the jeans on, you know, that, that, that still an avid golfer, but isn't you know might be a 20 or 25 handicap and Absolutely. that's where you know the draw biases the ultra lightweight the you know the lofts all that kind of stuff everything to be game improvement to help them play better golf and that's kind of where we all sit. absolutely game improvement but we don't want to forget about you know there are some better players that are going to be hitting this driver yeah. as well so we have every shaft uh you know stiff regular um a flex um ladies you know you name it we can fit anyone with this product I think what you're going to find, and I hope that the staff here at Hagen finds, is that it's a it's a great go-to club because it performs when they go out there and test it against some of the higher end models. Yeah, so fantastic. Full uh, line of left-handed as well. Left-handed, or? you name it, all the flexes are covered. Um, so I think again, real excited. I think last the last couple of years we had a really successful launch, but I think we're really hitting our stride now with the uh, turbo models. Matching fairways. Matching, matching fairways. So we right. have. Oh wait, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no! I don't want to go into. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to get too far ahead of us yet. Oh, oh okay. Because well, we wait. actually took this club last week out on the track, man. Oh, great. Oh. And uh, tested it out there with uh, Tom Morton, okay. and I think we should take a quick break. If you're watching us on on the Morton Golf Sales YouTube channel, you can. You're going to see it here. Otherwise, you can listen to it and. Uh, and see how it performs. Okay. So let's let's take a quick look. Hi, Jen here. I'm out at the Hagen Oaks Golf Complex in Sacramento, California with Tom Morton. Tom, you are a PGA Master Professional. What is your role out here at Hagen Oaks? So my role is in charge of kind of all the coaching and player development and club fitting here at all of our properties with Morton Golf. And so with that, we you know improve golfers through both lessons and golf clubs and really just look over their games and help them through the journey of improving. And today, Tom is going to be testing our brand new Cleveland club. Yeah. What do you have in your hands? So the brand new Cleveland Launcher HB Turbo. Um, today we're gonna, I'm gonna be testing a nine degree stiff shaft with their stock Miyazaki shaft. So it's a very lightweight shaft. And so this is brand new on the market. I actually have not hit it before, so I'm looking forward to see what it does. Excellent. Um, all right, let's just get into it. Sounds great. All right, is everyone ready for the big reveal? Tom, you ready? Yeah. All right, why don't you explain to us what, what we just discovered from this? Yeah, so for a driver that's really geared toward the average golfer, I thought it performed really well. So, you know, just first of all, the feeling of the driver, I thought it was very solid. Definitely very lightweight, which the average golfer really wants to have. And then some specifics. If we look at an important variable here, the launch angle, the driver launches really high off the face, which again, the average golfer really wants. But the good news is... So explain to me yeah. this 14 to 18 and this 15.7. What, yeah. what does that mean? So what TrackBand gives us is really optimal ranges based upon the golfer's speed in so the ball and the club head speed. And so what we have here is that this driver, if you look how it's meeting all these criteria, it really is maximizing the golfer's ball flight. And so that's a really great thing, especially for a driver that is 
um, you know, when we look at price points these days is really on the lower side of the price point. So it's giving us really good performance for a nice value price point. And what is this one coming in at? Three yeah, 349. And so a lot of drivers these days you're going to find on the 499 to 549 range. So, you know, it really is a good value and performing well. And, um, you know, the spin rate off of it wasn't overly high as well. So we're getting that nice high launch with low spin, which is what every golfer really wants. Excellent. So overall, you're pretty happy with this? Yeah, for again, a driver that's meant to be for the average golfer and it has that value price point, I thought the performance exceeded my expectations. Okay, for a low handicap driver, maybe not exactly uh, ideal, but for a higher yeah. handicap. Might need to tweak the shaft just a smidge okay. to optimize it, but I tell you what, the head felt very solid and the speed off of it was quite good, so the better player might be able to fit into it. All right, so the uh, carry distance was 251.3. Tune in and we're going to show what the, uh, uh, what the, the total, total distance, distance was, was yeah. in just a moment. All right, back to the studio. Bye. Are we going to, for those watching on the video, address the giant pink sweater that my brother was wearing in that? You mean the Crunchberry? Yeah, okay. I, I thought it right. looked good. He looked good. Right. I, I like he it. Good. He looked good. He can pull it off. Looks good on you. I love how you got out of that outfit real quickly, Jennifer, and got back into your studio outfit. That was <laughs> yeah. pretty amazing, actually. Continuity is so, well important on the, yes. on the show. Yes. Yeah, not okay right. so what do we find out in okay distance? so this is a new thing that we're going to be doing here as well which is our big reveal and this isn't very um we're going to make this like more uh, snazzy as we move on but um we are going to start comparing drivers as we test them as our guests come on to see how um how they rate how they rate and so who, kind of like if you've ever watched top gear they go out and they race okay, we're, we're not the, we're not stealing ideas from other <laughs> we're totally number stealing one. okay the, okay yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. but it's actually a cool feature it's so. a cool it's a cool feature it. yeah all right so the cleveland hb turbo launcher nine degree stiff driver your total carry distance from tom morton yep drum roll please at 269.9 yards well, that puts him in first place. Well, you are the the. Can we shut the show down now? Exactly, forever? the yeah. number one driver stay number one. ever tested, the only driver oh. ever tested, oh. but the number one driver. Congratulations Thank on you. first place. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you to, to so, everyone out there. Thomas hitting the driver, not a three wood. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. no, that's fine. Two, no, that's good. Come no, on, I've seen six, Tommy drive. He's not two sixty nine. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I actually, thought Tom it really liked further, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I got see. you. No, good. We're good. Yeah. Tom really liked it up there. Um, no, that was an excellent segment, actually. The, the, agreed. The, the club sounds amazing, so look forward to trying it. Yeah, we're excited. Very excited at Cleveland right now. Yeah, I know it, with some of the design, I get a little sneak behind the picture. The, sneak uh, behind the picture. A sneak behind the We know what you meant, Gary. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's okay. We're tracking. The, um, the acoustics that is as much of a science as the club design right, these days, right. too. I mean, they when they're testing, it's all of the spin rates and... MOI and all those kind of things, but now they have ways to actually measure acoustics as well, and that's a big part of the design. It's important. Yeah. We are like definitely getting weight performance to what they hear. Yeah, yeah, that's a and Top Gear kind of an idea, but I agree with you. We we talked a little bit about it at our sales meeting about the sound and the resonance in a in a golf club being yeah. sometimes as important to the end user as some of the other features. No doubt. Yeah, we all have hit drivers that sounded like tin cans, and yes. it doesn't matter how far it goes, you're you're just immediately turned right. off. That's yeah. so true. All right. So we like the driver. Like yes. the driver. Yeah. Nice. All right. Nice. All right. You can go on now. Well, as what? you can imagine, um, I will just very quickly go back through this. We are doing a HP Turbo in the three wood as well with some of the same features and look that Space Age look that you mentioned mm. before. Um, the high bore crown, which we're well known for. Um, again, we're looking to get weight back into the back of the club so we can get launch up. So um, that's your thing. Fat, yeah, turbo, fast, launch. I mean, fast and launch, high launch. We right? named it Turbo for a reason. Yeah. And we want this thing to be really easy to hit. We have Jamie Sedlowski, who is the longest player on the planet. He hits our golf clubs, oh. obviously, very far. Um, we hope that everyone in the audience will do the same. But again, very much the same look uh, in the three wood, as well as uh, kind of a taking a blast from the past with the Halo. I don't know, Kenny, you probably. Oh, yeah. You guys remember the Halo from a while back? We yes. do, yeah. Because you're old. Yep, we are. Well, not old. <laughs> so, the, again, the high bore, the, the cool technology about it is all of the vendors are trying to get the uh, center of gravity as low and away from the face as they can. And so the high bore technology is, is all of this kind of shaving, shaping that they're doing over there. And by actually making the back part of the crown lower and, and longer, 
are able to do that. And that's it kind of the kind of iconic shape design of all of the uh, different launcher woods and certainly done it in the HP Turbo 2. Yeah, and if you flip it around, you'll see a rail system that actually yeah. helps um, the player out of, you know, the short grass, the long grass, even the sand, you'll find that this, this rail system, a little bit on the heel and toe and then a little deeper rail in the middle, will make it very easy to hit the ball up in the air again yeah. uh, and, and you know hit some shots that maybe you haven't hit before. As we're talking about hybrids, this kind of moves into the iron conversation too as well, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So we're, we're really happy and, and very... Um, which one do you want the first? you want the player's iron or the... Why don't we pull them both and we can okay, talk about sure. them both at the yeah. same time. So. So, so I'll give those to you, Ken. Um, a couple different models that are coming out for Cleveland that are sort of expanding upon what we've done in the past. And kind of excited about this, uh, we call it this, the UHX, which stands for uh, Utility Hybrid Crossover. Jen and I talked about this yesterday. But really what we're trying to do is we've had some great success with one of our other uh, brands, Srixon, on tour with the utility uh, section or utility um, area. And so we decided to do one in uh, the Cleveland model and actually marry it to a cavity back design. So it starts the four iron through the seven iron in a utility look, and then it moves into a, a cavity back uh, in the eight, nine pitching wedge and gap wedge. Um, lightweight. Um, again, easy to hit, but probably for the maybe the better player in mind because of the look and and uh, the features that we've incorporated into the club head. Yeah, I mean, it looks you know more like a traditional forging thinner top line, some of yeah. those kind of things. So I just yeah. talking about how you know as as you move your clubs, you kind of need them to perform a little bit differently. Um, no doubt, and even you know, I, you know, long irons are difficult as heck for me to hit these days with as little you know as, as little as I get out there and. Uh, having a more utility, uh, high MOI, you know, low CG type of long iron, it's so much easier to hit than a traditional really iron. Good looking. Well, yeah, it's tested really yeah. well so far too. It's Again, it um, good players and intermediate players typically are the ones that have given us amazing feedback so far. Okay, yeah. and if I'm a you know twenty something handicap, there's a, a new iron as well that kind of uh, took the hybrid kind of feeling and put it throughout the entire set as well right right well we've changed some cosmetics from last year very very um, important club for us because it really hits a, a demographic in the game of golf that is probably our largest group which is the the moderate club head speed um, mid handicapper to higher handicapper uh, who needs again some help with turf interaction you know that wide sole is going to allow them to make sure that they don't hit those chunky shots that no one likes um, and just get some more production and consistency out of the club head. Uh, but it's a model that we've done real well with here at Hagen Oaks for years. Um, we're just expanding upon it, uh, upon it and keeping it light, keeping it easy. And, uh, you know, I think at the price point, again, $7.99 in steel, $8.99 in graphite. We're really on onto something here for, for that player. It's really interesting. We have, you know, we, a couple different uh, vendors carry an all hybrid iron set. Uh, Adams, back when they were making irons, kind of, yeah, that was all they did almost for them. Um, and those customers that use it come back and get it over and over and over again because they really uh, trust that, you know, again, we talk about that low CG, you know, and iron's only this wide. You can only get it so far back. And when that hybrid, you know, you can get that really low right. and back. It makes that ball go so much straighter. Yeah, yeah. And we, you just like you said, we just had a customer when you were here on the demo day. Yeah. That is going to the latest generation of this exact club because that's all he loves. Right, so right. No, they're, hit, they're a hit at the demo days. Yeah. I will say yeah. uh, these are a go-to for me, yeah. uh, which I think we have another one coming up. Yeah. The cool part about these two is that they're available custom fit and open stock too. So again, right. beginning golfers, this is such an easy way to get in the game. I mean, you get a, you know, a pitching wedge, an eight iron and a five iron, you're, you're good to go right out of the gate and have Absolutely. something that you can add into later. Yeah, we want them to do well right off the bat play more golf, and this is a, a really nice uh, conduit to do that. Yeah, Very, very cool. Nice. Right. Cleveland is known for one thing above all other things, and that's probably wedges no as question. well. And there's, I know we've got uh, some new evolutions in that as well, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we um, a couple of years ago came up with a, a wedge that we call the CBX. Um, now we're in the second iteration of that wedge, moving on into, uh, into that. I'll actually show it to you if it's okay. Yeah. Show it to you in a ladies design because I want to make sure that we don't forget about our ladies out there. But um, the CBX is really interesting in that it's um, been clear to us that not everybody that plays golf needs a blade wedge, which a blade wedge, if for, for those of you 
uh, that, are, that are out there is a little bit um, has a little bit smaller sweet spot, maybe for a little bit more of a skilled player. Um, we designed this wedge to sort of give everybody else a fighting chance out there with their short game. Um, it's a cavity back design so that in essence, we've created an expanded sweet spot closer to the toe and the heel so you can miss hit it and still get performance. Um, we've created this year's model with a little bit of vibration dampening in the back so it'll feel softer and not quite as rattly when you miss hit the ball, which we all do. Um, we've shortened the hosel, we call it feel balancing, uh, where we've taken eight grams of weight that we could play around with and we always want to try to get the center of gravity a little closer to the center uh, and create a better sweet spot for you. So that weight gave us that opportunity. Uh, v Soul technology for turf interaction, a little uh, uh, expanded um, toe area so that a little wider at the toe area. So in case you come in a little over the top, like some of us do, uh, you'll get protected by the wedge. Lightweight shaft, new grip. So there's a lot going on with this. Uh, at you can really see all of the the design, all the features, features yeah. and yeah. changes. It's what about the face? Well. So yeah, and the face has a Rotex milling, double milled face, <clears throat> so it's really going to be kind of a rougher surface uh, where the ball will grab and, and obviously create lots of spin for the player. Manufacturers are not saying this a lot because they don't want to ruffle the feathers of the USJ, but I know a few years back there was a big groove change and the amount of spin that the wedges uh, were putting on the golf ball decreased after that rule change with everything that they've done now they've got it right back up to the limit of it's what it limit. was prior to the the rule change and a lot has to do with the rotex milling and the grooves within grooves and everything that all the vendors are doing so right. um it's it's uh, they're putting a lot more spin on the ball than wedges even just a couple of years ago yeah we and again the wedge has been around since 1979 so we have a, a long history and lineage of putting together wonderful wedges there's quite a few cleveland players out there that know what i mean yeah. Um, and what our, our whole goal is to get you thinking a little bit more about those those shots from 125 yards and in. It's typically 65% of, of the shots that you take are going to be from that, that distance. So, you know, good wedges, practice your short game, and uh, hopefully play well. And really, you need to replace your wedges every couple of years anyways because uh, the face yeah, wears out. Yeah, you play out. quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, also, it's probably worth mentioning, too, is, is, you know, Scott mentioned, you know, all of those, that 65% of uh, shots kind of within the, you know, uh, within 100 yards. So many people have a single wedge in their bag. So and, true. And have a, you know, try to make kind of flop shots and pitches and chips and stuff, all that kind of stuff. So many people would be so much better served eliminating a long iron or an extra fairway wood and having an extra wedge in their bag because they'd use it so many more times during the round. Right, so, right. Um, so talking about that, what kind of what wedges should you have in your bag? See, it largely depends on the golfer and where their pitching wedge ends. You know, as golf clubs have gotten so much more stronger lofted over the years, there's usually a 8 to 12 degree gap between someone's pitching wedge and their first sand wedge. And it should be about every five to six degrees is 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 the um, is the gap. And so you know if you if you got a you know forty five degree pitching wedge, then you probably need a fifty or a fifty one degree gap wedge and a fifty six degree sand wedge and in a lob wedge at sixty or sixty two degrees and really kind of spacing it out. We kind of try to shoehorn in one wedge and try to make it you know work for all different kinds of Too shots when things. that's not what it's designed for. There's different right. bounces and, you know, typically the higher lofts have higher bounces and, and, uh, and vice versa on the lower ones. And, um, you, you know, you can have three different wedges that do three different things that allow you to make the same move on it. All right. So wedges are important. We should be, uh, probably training them out every couple of years. Yep. Um, and we should be keeping more in our bag. Yep. There is one other category of club though that we haven't talked about oh what's that it's true well if you're going to have a complete short game solution i think you should probably consider having a putter and we've That's actually important. developed uh, probably our finest most innovative putter yet it's called the front line and a grand opening here um but what we attempted to do is take some of the best features that we've had on in in past putters and incorporate it into this one and those features were something we called uh, raised alignment line 2135, which is basically taking the alignment line off of the flange and moving it up to the middle of the golf ball, which is 21.35 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So that when you look, um, not everybody's right over the ball when they putt. Sometimes your eyes are inside the line or outside the line. Well, this line right here will always be pointed to your true destination where you want the ball to go and it won't waver or distort. 
So it gives you confidence and it, it just assures that you're, you're uh, lined up properly. We also added something called uh, speed optimized face technology on, on the front, which we've done in the past on other putters. And really all that is is three different mill uh, millings in the front of the putter where the ball, depending if you hit it off the toe or the heel, will still roll out to um, where you want it to go, which is actually very helpful, I think, for players. And then lastly, we've added almost 50 grams of weight which is pretty unique. Yeah, I've actually seen this putter taken apart and there is so much weight out in the heel and toe. It's hmm. uh, it's dynamic. Yeah, and most most of the putters on the market are thinking just the opposite. They're like, let's push it back as low as we can, increase MOI. We, we're saying let's increase how far the ball rolls on its target hmm. and how long it will roll straight. So in, in essence, we would like to have a 15-foot a putt feel like a five-foot putt. And, and we have accomplished that. Dave Pels and others have done quite a bit of testing with this. And so very proud of the frontline putter um, at 199. I think it's for all the tech that you get with it, it's pretty fantastic buy as well. A long putter takes long motion and there's a lot of things that can go wrong with that. And by having the ball roll out with a shorter motion, you're eliminating the problems that can come with that motion. And that's the gist behind that putter. It's a great point. That's exactly true. And this is brand new. It just came out. Brand new. Fresh off the presses and we're ready to roll with this uh, uh, immediately. And you can uh, actually look up all of these products um, through our sponsor, uh, Morton Golf Sales. Morton Golf Sales. Uh, And before we take a quick commercial break to thank our sponsor. I want to thank you, Scott, for My coming pleasure. in today. My pleasure. Man, I feel very privileged to be here. Yeah. Grateful. It's great having you, Scott. Thanks, yeah. Bill. Thank Thanks, Cam. Thank Thanks, Jan. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in. Next time you get more product, come on back and see us again. We'll do. All thank right. you. Now we're going to take just a quick break, and here's a word from our sponsor. Hey, Bill here. I wanted to pause real quick to thank our sponsor, MortonGolfSales.com. Morton Golf Sales is the number one online retailer for all your golfing needs. From the newest clubs on the market to the classics that you can't find anywhere else, Morton Golf Sales has the best products and customer service at the lowest possible prices. Want to check out their huge online inventory of clubs, clothing, golf balls, accessories, and save 12% on your first order? Just use coupon code ROCKETS at checkout on mortongolfsales.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Now, back to the show. Mom's Beef Hash has a first name. It's from a can we see. But we all have another name. We call it untasty. We hate to eat it every day. And but if you, you ask us, us why, we'll say. Because Mama's hash tastes like trash and we should feed it to the dog. Welcome to the Jack Burgeroni Experience. Welcome to this week's Jack Burgeroni Experience. Is this the week we tell everybody what that is? No. No. Oh, come on. All right. All right. Well, want to know what our topic is this week? What is it? Iconic golf movies. Ooh. Figure this will be a hot there's, topic. There's only a couple of them. I think there's one. There's one. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about a couple more, but okay. there is only one. All right. And who knows what that one is? Tin Cup? No. no. What? I like Tin Cup. Do you guys like Tin Cup? Let's talk, about, let's tin talk cup? about Tin Cup. Okay, Tin Cup. So, it is a super popular movie. It's beloved by most people. I like it. I like it better today than I did when it first came out. Okay, makes sense, yeah. Because if everyone knows the premise of Tin Cup, I mean, there's a lot of comedy and hilarity throughout, but the ending of the movie always has bothered me as a as a once upon a time good player for someone to throw away the u.s open by hitting a dozen balls into the water over and over and over I, when that movie was over i just couldn't I yeah couldn't handle that. that's so, that's a pretty ridiculous it was thing. super ridiculous but again it kind of goes with the whole thing you're not you're not supposed to take it so seriously but at the time i did i mean had Kevin Costner, right. Rene Russo. I mean, lots of PGA Tour stars were in it at yeah. the time. Was that that's what made it fun? Don Johnson. Uh-huh. See, it's it's always hit a little too close to home for me. Bill was actually there when I had my own tin cup moment in the Sacramento. Did you City give up the U.S. Open? Once. <laughs> Bill Bill can tell this story probably better than I can. Oh, I don't even know if I don't know if the audience has time for this, Kenny. Uh, nor could they probably. Uh, what, what? Stay on the couch. <laughs> so, all right. Super quickly, 
years ago when we were playing amateur golf, we were playing, so we were paired together in the Sacramento City Amateur Championship. Yeah. And it was uh, being played at Bing Maloney Golf Course, which is which, a municipal golf course down in South Sacramento. Yeah. And uh, on the third hole, it's a little par three. I had birdied hole one, one and, and birdied hole two. Yes. And this is the second of four rounds. You play two rounds, and the next weekend you came back and played two more. Right. If you made the cut. Right. And Kenny pulled a little short iron to the left and behind the green and was sitting a little pitch. But like a lot of us do sometimes, he caught it a little thin. It went across the green and into one of the greenside bunkers. And Ken walked over and stepped in with a sand wedge and proceeded to take a swing. And again, like a lot of us do, uh, hit it heavy and left the ball in the bunker. And then he, what do you do? You dig in and you go hit the next one. And of course, when you hit the first one heavy and leave it in, you're going to make sure you're not going to do that again. So on the next shot, he thinned it and went across the green into the, into the green side bunker on the other side. So he walked out, stepped in, took a swing, left the ball in the bunker, took another swing, thinned it, bladed it, went back into this previous bunker. He walked in there, took a swing, left, left it in, in the bunker. bunker. Got upset. Really? Snapped the sand wedge over his knee. You didn't hear that from me, but that's what happened. <laughs> Went out, got his pitching wedge out of his bag, because in those days, he only had, we only had two wedges, <laughs> yep. kind of like we were just talking about. Stepped in, thinned the ball out of the bunker, across the green, into the other bunker. For reals. For reals. For reals. By this time, myself and our two playing partners were incredibly uncomfortable. I don't know if you could tell why, but... <laughs> We were feeling terrible for him, and also it was Oh, just, I bet you were in was, quite the mood. It was, yeah. Um, Kenny walks in with his pitching wedge, takes a swing, <laughs> leaves it in the bunker, takes another swing, out it comes. With, with, uh, with, um, he, he gets it on the green finally at that point. And the the other two playing partners were, uh, one of them had holed out and went to the next tee because he couldn't stand watching this debacle anymore. <laughs> And uh, Kenny finally puts the wedge down, gets his putter, and rolls the putt up to about this far from the hole. And um, then goes to tap in, but he misses that little putt, too. And then he taps in. For 13. Yeah, for 13, <laughs> 13 strokes. So hopefully I, we did that right. We could count him yeah. up. And then we go to the fourth tee. It's a par four. And what does Ken do? Birdie's the fourth hole. Yeah. So birdie, birdie, 13, birdie. It was an awesome start. <laughs> and he ends up missing the cut by a single shot at the end oh, of the, no. the round. So yeah. I broke 80 with a 13 yeah. on, on number three, which yeah. is the shortest par three in the history of the world. Yeah. So, so the yeah. real question I think all of us want to know, if you're saying this is exactly like the movie Tin Cup, did you get the girl? No. Oh. No. Yeah, I didn't get the girl. Well, so. eventually. I know. Did. I'm like, yes. what but, are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but for I guess the moral of the story is for anybody that says that scene at the end isn't realistic, it's damn realistic. Well, I don't know. Kevin Costner had a choice to lay up. You didn't have a choice, although you tried to lay and up out of the bunker making multiple times. A complete fool yes. of myself. Yes. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. All right. Next so, movie. Yes. Happy Gilmore. Oh, that's another. That's another classic. I take it back. I forgot about Happy Gilmore. Yeah. I don't know if I necessarily consider that. It just, it's just a comedy. It's one of the funniest movies. Uh, whether it's a golf movie, I'm not sure. But yeah, it's more a mini golf movie probably yeah. than anything. So uh, probably my favorite part of that whole movie is the giant Odyssey putter that he has in the shape of a hockey stick. Yes, yeah. which we had here. Yeah, we used to actually carry a number it inside of years. the store. Yeah, I think the scene with Bob Barker, which I probably can't say the whole thing, but um, where he starts talking about the price is wrong, yeah. um, I thought was was pretty funny yeah absolutely um i think you either like adam sandler movies or you don't like adam sandler movies um so i don't know yeah your name oh it's a it's a good it's one. a good one yeah All the right. one's on the list the legend of bagger vans it's a solid golf movie yeah it's, yeah. it's more you know obviously not a comedy and it's more uh but well, I, they I, don't have to be comedies well i understand but it's you know i think you know robert redford directed this movie so i think that automatically elevates it very much and that's so. matt damon right matt damon yes. yeah. will smith yeah it's a good one it's played on golf channel about every day however for, yeah so i don't know what your next one's going to be but if it's 
along the same lines, the greatest game ever played. Yeah, that's coming. Okay. You can talk about it now. Well, no, before. I just think that if you, to me, if you're going to compare those two, the greatest game ever played is a better movie in the okay, same why? In the tell, same vein. Tell us why. Because it's true. Okay. It's a true story. What What's happened it about? With Francis we met. Uh, 1913 U.S. Open, a local um, amateur golfer who was came from a very uh, poor oh, background, mm-hmm. ended up winning the United States Open at the country club in Brookline, Massachusetts against two of the greatest from uh, uh, overseas, Harry Varden and uh, James Taylor, I think it was, yeah, or no. I do not be able to tell you. Yeah. Sorry, I'm probably thinking the wrong, but, but. Yeah, you're, but you're right. I mean, and, and it's, you know, he went on to be one of the most iconic amateur players well, ever yeah, to play. The story so, is yeah. just, it's incredible. Yeah, especially at a time when um, golf was absolutely for the elite. Right, um, yeah. And to be from working class immigrant parents, I think is that's yeah, a to take cool down story. the two two of the giants of yeah, the game. I totally agree with him that that, that is a, a better movie for that reason. All right, so there you have it. Let us know what you guys think. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. That's yeah. That's all I can't the, all think of movies. any other movies. Oh, wait, the movie, the golf movie. We didn't talk about. I it doesn't even have to be golf movie. It's just the movie, movie right? So. I don't think there are any other golf movies. She doesn't like Caddyshack. 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 All right. One of the funniest movies, golf or otherwise, of all time. Totally. Jennifer. I think it's such a stupid movie. I just don't get this movie. I'm sorry. I know. All right. Is this segment over yet? Because uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty tough to take right there. All right. Why, what, so what's the big deal about this is your chance okay so obviously we might be dating ourselves a little bit but Roddy Dangerfield Ted Knight Chevy Chase pretty much enough said right there three of the most iconic actors ever and funny yeah comedians you're not gonna mention Bill Murray and Bill Murray well sorry I did I should have mentioned Bill Murray and again to this day so some of you might know Bill Murray from playing in the AT&T Pro-Am at Pebble Beach every year, but this is where he became famous right. from trying to kill the golfer on the golf course for the entire film. Pardon me, sir, but if I kill all the golfers, there's not going to be a place, of course. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, uh, well, there's just too many too many funny scenes and too many funny lines in that movie to even mention. But, yes, it's not it's not stupid. It's funny. Every day at the golf course, we every use at least two or three lines day, from the movie. People. Yes. Yes. So. No. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say that I've had the privilege of meeting and hanging out with both Michael O'Keefe and Cindy Morgan. Right. We've had him out here. Lovely people. Michael um, O'Keefe, who played Danny. <laughs> right? Danny Noonan. Okay. He was the, the caddy that and, won the caddy scholarship. And yep. Cindy, who was Lacey. Lacey Underall. Oh. Who could forget Lacey Underall? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> kind of creepy um but it's judge smales it's clearly judge smales, just smales. Yes, yeah that was my imitation poor or otherwise that was that was it oh see yeah. i didn't even, i know i don't oh. even i can't even follow those Sorry. so i don't know how you can call caddyshack stupid if you haven't even seen it and don't understand i've seen what it some of the jokes i've are. seen it i've seen it it's more yeah. times than i care to remember which obviously <laughs> i try to block it yes um okay so that's it. You guys don't have anything else to say about your... Everyone on every podcast from here on out is going to think slightly less of you for not thinking Caddyshack's the greatest is it a, So my question, I think the, the real question is, is, this a, is it a guy versus girl sense of humor? Or is it just a golfer thing? We need to take the poll survey. Let's, let's hear some feedback. All right. I do need feedback. Is there anyone else out there other than me who doesn't get... Caddyshack. The crazy part is, is as iconic and funny and hilarious as Caddyshack is, Caddyshack 2 is so, so bad. There was a Caddyshack 2? <laughs> yes. No, I agree. That That is one of the worst movies ever made. It's golf brutal. or otherwise. And, and we all just kind of just forget about it like it didn't exist. But yeah. it's... Well, it came out so many years later. None of the original characters were in it. Yeah, thank God. I remember watching it at the theater and leaving three quarters of the way Did through. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. With an old friend of ours, James. Yeah, yeah. that just, was terrible. Just couldn't take it. It was so unfunny. Yeah. I will say I like the mu- the music in Caddyshack. 
Kenny Loggins, yeah. iconic. I'm all right. And yeah. I believe he did the music for Caddyshack yeah, too, as he well. Did. They yeah. had, did bring him back. So that's one right point that but... that was watched by two people. I think Bill and James. So yes. okay. yeah. yeah. Well, did I miss anything? What other movies did you guys bring anything to the table? No, there's uh, Follow the Sun, which is the Ben Hogan oh, story, a which is a yeah, okay. it's an older movie, but uh, Glenn Ford, the old actor, played Ben Hogan. Yeah, many of you will know who Ben Hogan is, and many of you probably do not, but he uh, or don't know his story. But he was one of the well, first of all, he's one of the greatest champions ever in golf. But uh, he was he and his wife were hit uh, head on by a bus, and he leaned over to try to protect her in the passenger seat and probably saved his life. But their car was crushed, and uh, his legs were crushed in the accident. And he was almost killed in he the accident. He was almost killed, yeah. yeah. And he did, couldn't even walk for almost a year. Right. And he did come back and uh, ended up winning uh, several more majors, including three. He was three, able to come back from that? Yeah. Yeah, and actually won. And, and, and had you know some of his greatest wins after the accident. Yeah. But he won three majors in 1953. After the accident. After the accident, yeah. yeah. So oh. follow the sun was the what they used to call the old the PGA Tour players back in the day because they would kind of drive from tournament to tournament and follow in the sun to the next tour stop. Yeah, I know we did. We had Ken Wharton Senior on our first show, and um, we didn't talk. He didn't bring this up, and I couldn't really figure out how to kind of pull this into the conversation. But one of my favorite stories that Ken used to talk about was how um, when we had one of the tour events out at the Hayden Oaks Golf Course how some of those players used to sleep out on the driving range um, because there was just no money in, in the, the tour really back in the day. Yeah. And so they would just camp basically out at the golf course. Totally. Can you imagine or that? Or sleep in their car probably. Yeah. 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 A lot of the tour events, they'd actually have to, before you could agree to host an event, you'd have to have so many families that would be open to hosting tour players in your home because they would go literally go stay at people's houses. Yeah. So, so that's kind of a wild. little piece of trivia. Yeah. All right. What else? What other movies are we missing? Or we, we get them. Is there any golf movies that you guys think that we've missed? Yeah. I think we've Those are the major ones. The best ones. Yeah. Okay. That's it. We've done it. We have named the best movies. All right. Someone's going to tell us that we forgot. Out, outside of Caddyshack, okay. which, but. <laughs> No, Sorry, you people. Don't, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? We have something new this week. Cool. Golfing with Clay. Oh, that guy. Clay. Clay. <laughs> this could be fun. This could be fun. Okay. Yeah. We'll see how it works. So, if you're watching us on our YouTube channel, Morton Golf Sales, you're going to get to see a pretty special episode. If you're just listening to us, hey, take a break. Come check us out on YouTube so you can find this pretty cool episode. And. With that, I want to thank you guys for joining us this week on Hazel Rockets. We'll catch you next time. Be sure to check out our sponsor, Morton Golf Sales. Know that you can catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, subscribe to our channel. And with that, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. This is a golf cart. It's kind of like a go-kart, but it has a roof, doesn't go nearly as fast, and is the perfect vehicle to get you from the tee box to the green, no matter how many shots it takes. However, it has come to our attention recently that there seems to be a huge disconnect between where golfers are going and where they want to go. So the purpose of this video is to show the difference between going forward and backward in your golf cart. To select one, use this little tab thing. If you hear a super high pitched sound that kind of sounds like that one mosquito that won't leave you alone when you're trying to go to sleep, then you're probably in reverse, which means you can do this. Whoa! Sorry, not that, this. If you don't hear that sound, then you're in drive, which means that when you slam on the gas thinking you're in reverse, you'll hit whatever's in front of you, like this. You get the point. So that's how you go the right direction on the golf course. Remember, don't try to go backward when you're forward and forward when you're backward. Got it? Wait, backward when you're, you're backward and forward when you're...
your back and forward. But then you go backward and when you're full. Forward when you're backward, backward when you're 